Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I just got back from my first real grocery shopping trip since the pandemic started. My family had been able to hold out for about two, three months or so, uh, you know, with just living off of what we had in our pantry and, uh, you know, people going out, kind of piggybacking some orders on friends that I knew were going out and stuff like that. But, you know, after a couple months, it, we could continue, we could survive, we've got everything that we absolutely need here, but there were some things we just kind of wanted and, you know, I felt like it was a sensible, uh, move to kind of go out and you know do some grocery shopping so i just got back while i was out i saw some ridiculous things being done by people and i wanted to talk about some of those maybe some of these things are things that maybe maybe you have inadvertently done i wanted to address them and throw out there you know some problems that i saw out there while i was out and talk about what i did to try to protect myself now that said given the fact i'm going to be poking fun at some people's behaviors that might beg the question well do i myself think that i'm perfect no absolutely not if anything that i say that i've been doing uh, seems problematic to you, I'd be really interested in hearing your thoughts on it. As long as you write in complete sentences and it's not all in angry capital letters or anything like that, it doesn't even have to be spelled properly. I really uh, welcome and appreciate people's comments when there's constructive criticism. Please do send it my way. That's how I get smarter. That's how we all get smarter is by being open to criticism. So please send it my way. And I, But that said, I do have some criticism for a lot of the people that I saw out there. The big thing that I saw was uh, with masks. A lot of people were wearing their mask, and I don't know why they were doing this. Most people had medical masks. This is a, an a actual N95 mask. Most people had medical masks or ones they just made at home. And they were doing this thing where they would wear it and have their, their nose sticking out. I don't know why they would do that. I would think if anything, you'd want to like kind of pull it up and uncover your mouth so you could talk more easily. I don't know what the draw was to open it up and have their nose exposed. I don't even know if I need to really finish that thought about why that's a bad idea. But obviously, if you want to be filtering the air that is going into your lungs, you need to you need to cover up both of those holes there. So if you're wearing a mask, make sure that it covers your entire face and your nose, and also make sure that you don't have leaks around the edges. If air uh, you know, is just kind of circumventing the mask, going around cracks at the bottom or at the top, you know, maybe some air is being filtered going through the front surface, but if you are not filtering everything, there could be airborne particles having an easy trip right into your, uh, your lungs, uh, just going right around the mask. So make sure that it does uh, fit. Now, if you're making your own mask and it doesn't have one of these little metal bands at the top, put one in, grab some twist ties. You know, you could sew some twist ties right up into the top there as you kind of fold it over and twist ties just, you know, maybe bundle like, I don't know, like four to six of them in there. And then you would be able to kind of uh, contour that top so that you get rid of these if you have a pronounced nose like I do. Another big thing that I saw people doing was at the point of purchase. They were pulling out their wallet or their purse and they were, you know, handing cash over or running the card through the machine. And then they were just throwing everything back in their purse, back in their wallet. And they weren't treating that purse or wallet as though it was the hot zone that it had potentially become by them not being cautious. So those were the two huge things that I saw people doing. Now, let me talk a little bit about, uh, you know, my approach to how I tried to keep my sa myself safe when I went out. <coughs> oh my God, I caught it. <laughs> That's just phlegm or a bug. I don't know. There's a lot of bugs out right now. Uh, first, let's talk about PPE. Uh, I, you know, like everybody else, wore a mask. This is an actual N95 mask. I bought a bunch of these like way back before it was even plausible to be a pandemic back when like people preppers were crazy to buy this kind of stuff i bought a bunch of these and i've had these for this uh pandemic i haven't had to you know pay through the nose for any of these i think these were they were like a few dollars each back when i bought them so i've been wearing this and i've been wearing these multiple times i think that the the thing that really wears out on these masks is the uh the rubber band more than the other surface. I've been sterilizing them in a, a UV sterilization box. You can also just leave them in your hot car. That, that, that'll work. Um, but uh, yeah, the, 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 big, uh, the big failing point on these, I think, is really the rubber bands. I've gone through two of them so far and uh, you know, over the past three months, and it's been failure of the rubber bands, really, that's uh, caused me to retire them. So number one, and I put this on first before I get out of the car, and I take it off last just as I'm going to be getting back into the car. I leave this on the longest because this is the most sensitive, most vulnerable part of your person. Uh, the other thing that I was having with me was gloves. Uh, a lot of people wear uh, single-use nitrile or latex gloves. These are just kitchen, uh, kitchen like dishwashing gloves. I like these because they're more comfortable and you can reuse them. If You can reuse latex gloves and nitrile gloves, but they're, when you're pulling them off, it's really kind of difficult to kind of get them back on you yourself later on. And they're just, they're flimsy. They, they 
tear apart and they are really single use. You know, these old N95 masks are supposed to be single use, but you can use them an awful lot of times. Latex gloves, two times, maybe three times, and then they're, they're usually falling apart. So just using these kitchen gloves, I think uh, makes a lot of sense. So I, I was using those. Uh, what I'd also bring uh, with myself is uh, sanitizing wipes. And these are uh, ones that I'd bought, you know, back before when it was crazy to think that there'd ever be a pandemic. I'd bought a bunch of these. So I have them. These are a little difficult to come by uh, nowadays. Uh, but uh, uh, this is what I've been using as a convenient sort of way of sterilizing things. Uh, I don't just walk around with these in the store, though. What I do is I have a little Ziploc bag with a shoelace that I just tape to the sides there. It's kind of like a, my, my own little man purse. I just throw this on before I go in. And what I put in here is just whatever important things I'm going to need while I'm in the store. I've got my ID in here because all my credit cards all say check ID. Uh, people never actually ask, but I figured like that'd be the one time. So I put my ID in there. I put my credit card in there. And you know, if I'm going to a grocery store that uses like a grocery store card, like to give you discounts or whatever, I'll put that in there. And I'll throw, you know, usually three or four of these right inside there. Uh, and that does two things. One is that when I'm, like I said, that point of purchase kind of moment, when I'm, I'm doing the purchase, I'm grabbing the cards out of here, you know, do whatever I need to do with them. And then they're going right into a sterilizing environment. If I want to, I can grab the wipe out if I have time and kind of wipe the whole thing off right away. But even just putting it in there, the insides, uh, you know, all, you know, filled with these sanitizing wipes and everything. And then when I want to go in and I grab these things, I've got the wipes all over them. I just kind of rub them off. And, uh, and that works really well for me. Instead of trying to take, you know, if you're a woman and you've got a purse, or if you're a guy and you've got a purse or a wallet and like trying to remember like, you know, what, where are the sterile parts of the wallet? Where are the unsterile parts of the wallet? Just making your own and walking around and you can see through it because it's clear. I find that this works really, really well. Now, once you get back to uh, your vehicle, and you're ready to head, head out, um, there's another step that I like to do, and that is, uh, you know, taking everything off. Now, the first thing I do is while I'm still filthy, I get the car all loaded up. In the back of the car, uh, what I do is I take some plastic bags or, or plastic sheeting and kind of put it over the groceries. You know, if you're driving in the summer, you get the windows open. Uh, that's good because you're getting fresh air in. Although if you're in a really close city environment, when I was driving through cities, I would close the windows. But when I was on most of the country roads, just have the windows open. But you don't want to be stirring up any virus that might be on the groceries. So covering, the, covering them up in a plastic sheeting or blanket or something like that makes it so that you're not getting the, that virus kicked up. Once you get all the stuff secured in the back of your car, then it's time to start taking off your gear. I usually start by taking the rubber gloves and I grab some of the wipes that are right on me and I will go through and I'll clean all my credit cards. I will clean off the rubber gloves, get them all clean. And as soon as these are clean, I take them and I put them in a, a small cardboard box that I have in the car. Uh, the purpose of the cardboard box is just separate things from the rest of the car so they're not rolling around, blowing around. Like I mentioned, uh, you know, this box can close. So when you're driving, you know, if there is any virus on that stuff, it's not blowing around the car. I've gotten so used to like when I've got an itch, I use that instead of this. It's like a permanent thing now. Uh, the other, the, the uh, last step is with the, uh, the N95 mask is I will take that and I'll demo this because I'm not sure that a lot of people know how to do this. When you're putting the rubber bands around, you don't want to be like plucking them because it could be knocking virus off. This is a clean mask. When you're taking these off, you grab here, pull it away. You don't want to let it rub all over this. You know, this might not be perfectly clean because you're in the store, but it's cleaner than it will be if you start rubbing your mask on it. Then we're going to come around, grab the edges here, and without rubbing your face and without having like that kind of uh, kind of pop to pop virus off, get it off your face. That goes in the box too. Back in, get your sanitizing wipes because your fingers got dirty taking the mask off, get your fingers sanitized again. And then you want to close this box up, put it on the floor, get it uh, kind of uh, shut up. And one way of sanitizing everything that's in there is just to leave it in a hot car. Uh, uh, the virus, even in a non-hot car on those kind of surfaces, should be dead within like two or three days. If it's in a hot car above 170 degrees, like sitting out in the sun or whatever, these things are going to be sterilized in like a matter of hours. So this is almost its own kind of sanitizing box. In fact, it literally is a sanitizing box as long as it's in a hot and dry environment like a car. So that's the method that I've 
use today to uh, you know be able to go in, keep myself clean, and uh, you know come back with you know as little chance of infection on my body as possible. Now, once I got back, there's an entire process about cleaning uh, all, all the stuff as it comes in. I made a whole other video on that, and I'll put a link to it here if you want to check that out. But it's really important to consider anything coming into your house as being potentially infected. Is most of it infected? Maybe, maybe not. I like to think probably not. But even if it has a chance of being infected, pneumonia is terrible. COVID-19 is a really awful disease to get if you're one of those people that responds to it really badly. No one wants to get pneumonia. pneumonia. Nobody wants to die. No one wants one of their family members to die by lack of care. So when you're bringing things into your house, do take that level of care. Wash all of the produce that are coming in and anything that you feel that you don't have to wash, like a, a bag of chips, a box of crackers, uh, you can just take those things and kind of like what we're doing with this, put them in a box, Put them down in the basement, put them in your attic. Anything that you don't, doesn't have to go in the refrigerator, that's what we're doing. So we don't have to wash everything. Anything that doesn't need to go in the fridge, we put in a box and put away and just let it sit for a week. Let it sit for the week, let mother nature destroy all the virus. And then once you go for it, you have that added level of certainty that you know, you're not gonna be infecting yourself by something that you bought at the store and then brought into your home. That's it, I hope some of this you found helpful. If you have any tips for me, I would really love to hear them again. Complete sentences, doesn't even have to be spelled properly, as long as it's not mean-spirited. I love uh, critique, I love uh, constructive criticism. That's how I learn, that's how we all learn. That's it, thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.